welcome to another episode of How to Run a Successful Business and Still Have a Life. This is episode 52. Thank you so much for joining us. And today's episode is brought to you by the Simply Business Summit. I do hope you can join us in tropical North Queensland for some rest and some rejuvenation, but also to level up your business and to make sure that you are hitting the goals that you set for yourself at the beginning of the year. Please come and join us. It's going to be three days of awesome fun with like-minded business women. You can register now at Simply Stay. Morgan.com. Well, this is your part number three of my three-part motherhood series. And today I thought I would spend some time because we talked about boundaries last week and we talked about connection the week before. And it made it sound a little bit like I, you know, had all of my shit together. But actually, I thought I'd spend today telling you about all of the things that went wrong, and all of the things that I got wrong along the journey and how I kind of got myself to, to where I am now. And I guess it all started with Lucinda because um, prior to Lucinda, um, it's, you know, Heath and I had a bit of a hard time um, conceiving Lucinda. And then when Lucinda came along, I was two years into my, my business and two years into my business and also um, two years into my um, performance, which I will call Stacy has it all together. And uh, this, the show must go on. It's a saying that I've had, um, you know, from, you know, my very first Twinkle Toes ballet class. And so when I had Lucinda, or when I was pregnant with Lucinda, I very much felt like the performance was going to need to continue regardless of, um, of my motherhood status. And so when I had loose, I had um, some really high expectations for myself on what that meant and what that was going to mean and what our life together was going to look like and what it meant for my business. And so when Lucinda was born, I, um, the very first person through the door um, after my parents was a dance mum who helped herself, who, you know, made her way to the hospital and, um, Lucinda was 10 days overdue. So I think she must have just gone to the front door and assumed that by now I would have had a baby and asked for me by name and turned up. Um, and there I was like eight hours into being a new mum, and, you know, in my nighty with my newborn on my chest. And there was one of my clients right there in front of me. And so, you know, the show must go on. And so then I'd found myself there performing and saying, yes, it's very exciting. Now I still haven't, you know, don't worry, even though I've just birthed this child and had 32 hours of labor, I'm still thinking about your child and the tap routine that I need to teach them when I get back into the studio. So don't you worry. I'm still um, keeping you front of mind. And as you can tell, like I'm getting a bit of PTSD just reliving it because I think back on this time now and I think what on earth was I thinking? Um, and she wasn't the only dance mum to come through the door. You know, we live in a small country town. So I had a, pl a plethora of visitors that just made their way into the hospital. And of course it was pre-COVID. So there weren't any restrictions. Anyone could just say a name and walk through the door back in those days. And so, you know, whether it was in the hospital or once I'd left the hospital, I, I didn't have very much time at home with Lucinda until I was back in the studio um, choreographing. We were due to go on an international tour with our dancers three months after Lucinda was born. So I had to choreograph that show. Um, I didn't have to, let's make that clear. I could have delegated that at any point, but I didn't. Um, and so we were back in the studio creating um, our show for our tour and um, and teaching classes and Heath and I got you know into a really good structure of you know I would have Lucinda during the day and take her with me in the in the capsule to classes that I was teaching and then as soon as he finished work he would come to the studio I would feed whilst I was teaching um, Lucinda for her nighttime feed put her in the capsule give her to Heath Heath would take her home and put her to bed and you know, then we'd get up and do the whole thing over and over again. And that's okay when you've got a newborn. I mean, it's not okay, but it's, it's doable when you've got a newborn because all of they, all they do is eat and feed and sleep and um, change. And that's, that's that. But once they start to move around, it becomes a whole, a whole new ball game. And Lucinda um, became very independent, very fast. And that, structure that we got ourselves into and that plan that we you know got ourselves into became harder and harder as the days went on and by the time I got to the end of that year so Lucinda was born in March and by the time I got to the end of that year I pretty much had a full-on breakdown and and decided that this was not how it was going to be done anymore and that I needed to put Lucinda into daycare just to get a little bit of breathing space a little bit of time and so that is something that I 
know now that I probably should have done sooner, but it just wasn't, it just didn't occur to me that that was going to be a possibility, which sounds so strange. Um, but Luce went into daycare one day a week and that just gave me the break that I needed in order to make sure that, um, that I had some time to not lose my mind. And then as, as Lucinda got older, I started to find um, that the baby was a really great excuse to be able to delegate things, things that I thought that I didn't, you know, in any way have permission from my clientele or from my team to not be doing, the baby became a great excuse to be able to delegate those off. And that, that sounds really strange that I'd used Lucinda for that purpose, but I really just didn't give myself permission until I had Lucinda to be able to do that in my business. And so that was a really big learning curve for me. That is something that I should have put in place before Lucinda was born. That is something that I didn't need permission for, that as the owner of the business, as the person leading and managing um, the business, that should have been at, at you know, the point, the, you know, front of mind for me. And it, and it just wasn't. So when I started to delegate things and started to get, take things off my plate, and then I could actually enjoy the time I was spending with Lucinda. And then I could actually enjoy the time that I was in the studio working and not feeling torn the entire time that I was either of those places or trying to do two things at once and be in two places at once. I really was able to kind of start easing into, um, this, this managerial role, which I was doing as, you know, I say doing in inverted commas, but I actually wasn't really doing well. So when I started to delegate different tasks within my business, of course, I would rescue all the time. I was, you know, launching in and rescuing. Um, anytime anyone had a question, just let me do it. I will do it. You know, in my head, I'm saying, you know, I'm saving the day. Here I am being the hero. But in hindsight, what I was actually doing was not giving my team the opportunity to succeed and not setting them up for success and not giving them the opportunity to shine and to grow new skills and to learn to do things themselves and to have that feeling of, you know, I've, I've done it, that feeling of achievement. And so I've become a lot better <laughs> at that as the, as the process has moved on. And the, the older that Lucinda's got, the more I've been able to really figure out what it is in the business that's important for me to be doing what I do well. And, you know, where can I hire people who are awesome at their jobs to be able to do those things well so that it, um, they get an opportunity to grow as well. And so then Patrick came along and of course um, I was, you know, as you are, when you have one baby, you go, okay, well, this is one, two can't be that different. And two is very different. And so not only did I have Lucinda running around as a toddler, but then I had Patrick to deal with. And then, you know, at the same time that coincided with the building, um, us moving to a new building and the business really, really growing um, really, really fast at, at that particular point in time, my team growing as well. And so every, it was this perfect storm. Everything kind of just, just took off. And whilst it was really fast, fast paced and really, um, really great. There were a lot of things that, um, that happened then that, that were kind of missed along the way that I then, um, regretted. Patrick wasn't, um, wasn't having a very good time. Once I got pregnant with Henry, we really saw a big shift in Patrick. It was when Patrick turned two. Um, Patrick really started to struggle. He was um, having really frequent meltdowns. He was really not coping with his surroundings. He became very sensory. And so we went on a journey with Patrick at that point of, um, you know, discovering who he was and what his um, intricacies were and how his brain was working. And we have incredible professionals in our world um, in terms of OTs and speech therapists who have been, you know, helping us along that journey and I'm forever indebted to them in terms of my mothering and how they've helped me establish that but it was a really interesting juggle at that point um, between having Lucinda and then having Patrick and figuring trying to figure out Patrick whilst also nurturing Lucinda whilst the business was growing really really um, really fast and then of course I, had, I was pregnant with Henry at the same time so when Henry was born um, I had spent so much time focusing on Patrick and Patrick's development um, that I really didn't bond with Henry immediately, which scared the living daylights out of me because with Lucinda and with Patrick, it was really um, kind of instinctual. And then Henry kind of just got dragged from place to place and we didn't really have that time to connect. Um, and luckily, you know, that came a little bit later. It did come eventually, but it came a little bit later. And so I was really worried in those early days that we didn't have time that we didn't have time, but that we didn't connect in the same way that I connected with the others. And um, juggling that focus as a mum, you know, any of you who have, have children and uh, running businesses, you know that that 
focusing your energy and focusing um, where you're at and trying to be present is, is perhaps the hardest thing that you have to do. And so I had to spend a lot of time really connecting. And I spoke two episodes ago about connection. I, you know, really worked hard to connect with Henry and, um, and now he and I have the most beautiful relationship and he is just pure joy. Um, until he's not, he's a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde, <laughs> Henry, but that um, I had no, nothing to worry about in terms of that connection, because it really, even though it came later with Henry, it really, you know, came on um, really thick and fast and he's um, absolutely incredible. But there are a lot of things, you know, along that journey, then I had three kids. So then it was about, you know, how, how am I going to try and figure out, you know, how Lucinda's going to start school and then Patrick in the middle, um, and we were learning more about him every single day and giving him everything he needed. And then Henry as well, you know, coming along and trying to form, to form that bond and then running the business on top of that. So there was a lot going on at that time. And so the reason I share this is because all three children were different and all three children gave us different um gave challenges in different ways in terms of how how we thought we had things under control we had Lucinda and we were like we've got this schedule and we've got these things and then Patrick came along and you know things became different again and then Henry came along and it became different again and so whilst we um we have you know certain boundaries and things that we talked about in the last episode in terms of our family it was really about learning um each of the individuals that we had in front of us, how each of them needed to be nurtured differently and how we could do that within the scope of all of the other things that, um, that Heath and I were committed to in terms of our businesses and um, our extended families and all of the things that we are, we are doing on a day-to-day basis. And most of the time, you know, we just got by. Some of the times we got things really wrong. Some of the time, you know, we had a good day and things were feeling good and things were going really well. But it's it's been up and down. And if you're feeling that at the moment, if you're feeling like you've, you know, you've maybe got one connection with one kid, but another one of your kids is kind of, um, you know, not coping as well, then I encourage you to to cut yourself some slack and to know that these things come in ebbs and flows and that it, it, it is a journey and things will be good sometimes and not good other times. And it's about riding that roller coaster and keeping yourself sane along the way. Because I think the biggest thing for me um, throughout the journey of each of the three children was that in the times when I was looking after myself, they thrived. And the times where I was martyring myself and, you know, doing everything for everybody else because that's what I should be doing or that's what a good mum would be doing, um, I really, really felt it. My cousin, Melissa, uh, came to visit me. She lives in Darwin and we don't get to see each other very often, but I love her dearly. She came to visit, um, I think, when I had just had Henry and I had, I was just, you know, talking and saying something, something, you know, sort of mum of the year, I did this, whatever it was. And she said to me, hang on, hang on. I've, you know, spent two days with you and I can tell you, you've said mum of the year sarcastically to me probably 20 times and I don't want to hear it anymore. And I went, what? Really? She said, yeah, you say it all the time and you are mum of the year. You're doing a great job. Stop saying it like you're not because you're just putting that out into the universe. And if you're actually thinking that, if that's actually your self-talk, then you need to tidy that up. And it was like, oh. and once I became conscious of it and realized how much I was actually doing it, that, you know, that martyr mentality, they're like, I'm not going to win mother of the year. The kids went to school with no socks on. Like that talk that I was using all the time was actually quite detrimental because it was getting into my psyche. It was making me second guess myself. And from that, you know, hard talk from Liz from that point onwards I've really been conscious about the words that I use and how how I speak that out into the universe and I'm really conscious when other people do it as well because I know that it's um it wasn't helpful for me and it's not helpful for them as well so if you're guilty of of doing that and saying that then I encourage you as well to cut it out and if you don't I'll send my cousin Melissa to your house she'll definitely let you know but yeah the the self the self-talk part of, of this motherhood journey and the looking after yourself, the self part of the, the motherhood journey is so incredibly important. 
not just for your kids, but for you as well. You cannot pour from an empty cup. And if you're not spending time doing what it it takes you to fill up your cup, what those things are that, you know, light you up and bring you joy, then you're not going to be able to serve anybody um, to your very best ability. So my biggest takeaway and and the thing that I would change if I, um, you know, if we're going to spend an episode talking about all the things that (laughs) I didn't do very well, the biggest thing, the biggest lesson is um, that in those moments where I am taking care of myself and my kids definitely feel feel it and I and I'm definitely a better mum and a better businesswoman and a better a better wife in those moments so do what you can to look after yourself figure out what those things are that light you up and put time aside set it in your diary make it happen and prioritize it and don't feel guilty about it because you're actually whilst you're doing things for yourself you're actually doing that to serve others and and isn't that what we do isn't that isn't that our thing I hope that me sharing all of this is um, you've found it helpful. If you have, I would love to hear what you're struggling with at the moment or what um, resonated with you. Please take a photo if you're listening on your phone and uh, throw it on your Insta story and tag me. I'm at Simply Stacey Morgan on Instagram. You can hit me up with the DM and let me know what's going on in your world. I do appreciate you taking the time to listen um, to the podcast. It does mean a lot to me that, um, you know, I can click on the button and see that people are downloading and liking and sharing. It does... um, you know, it does make it feel, it feels like all of the hard work is very much worth it. And I do appreciate you taking the time. Thank you so much for listening. And I will be back next week. See ya. 